Welcome back to Consider This. I'm Melissa Idris with Sherrod Kutin and Senator Yusmadi Yusuf is, join, is on the show with us talking about reforms to the Senate. Now, the proposal that you put forth from this working committee was about the tenure of senators. Right now, if I'm not mistaken, the term for a senator is three years. But the proposal is to increase that to five years. Why? Okay. Uh, this idea uh, came from the senators and speaker from uh, Canada. They said, what happened in Canada, we should have at least five years. Initially, people thought because of for the ben benefits of the senator to get a pension whatsoever. No, actually, according to him, at least you need someone to be educated to familiarize and say what's their role in, 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 in their Wanagara. So by you, you familiarize yourself for the first year, you try to understand your role in the second year. By the third year, you're about to function effectively, you're out. So according to them, reasonably is five years. So is that something you know? Actually, our constitution allow us to have even six years. So, but wouldn't... wouldn't but you already have two terms, right? You could have possibly yeah. two terms. Correct. What, what happened under, under constitution, you are appointed by two phases. You're allowed to be appointed by two phases. First phase, you can be appointed for the first three years. But you can be renewed, but that's subject to whoever can be political master, whoever How is that powers be? that be. <laughs> so, what happened now, the constitution allow it for me, make best for specific purpose. Not for the purpose of, as, as what you said, to, to, to get ineffective senator who are not doing their job, to have a long tenure. So for me, that's a waste, wastage. But for me, if it's, if it's about to make uh, the Dewan Negara function effectively, I say, why not? So of course. So now, if you ask me whether that's my priority out of all the nines, no. That's why I put that as the last, yeah, the, the second last of all the nines. Because for me, the first uh, two important is number one, the support system, and number two, the select committee. And of course, thirdly, you have to say the law, to draw the line, to bring the independence of parliament. Maybe we could just very quickly talk about the gender issue, because mm -hmm. there was a lot of complaints that Pakata did not deliver on gender equality, gender par parity uh, in the formation of cabinet. And then we also, when you look at parliament and what, what is the balance of you know, men to women and so on, and, uh, and other genders as it were. Um, with Dewan Negara, uh, what's, the, what's the history? Has it, has it, have there been many women as uh, senators? You have to be careful to answer this, otherwise yeah. it will be the juicy part of our, <laughs> our, our session. Because <laughs> Melissa even asked me, how come only two ladies in my committee? Yeah, I was looking uh, at the list. Correct. I'm not you see, I tell you there's, there's how important it is. people and, and, and only frankly two women. speaking, this important issue not only been practiced in different way, but sometimes I think something good I need to highlight. The late Tuan Guru Ni Abdul Aziz, I was told, and in fact I saw it in Parliament, by design he will make sure that representative from Kelantan's a two caliber, highly qualified ladies. Because I saw, I can mention here something, you know, Senator Mumtaz, highly qualified lady lawyers, uh, Kharia, and now you have uh, uh, Senator uh, Asma, who was a, was a f uh, former lecturer of UITM. So, for me, you, 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 you can level uh, the, 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 the gender inequality while not amending the law. There are certain things you can, done, uh, you can do at the administrative level, of which Ning Aziz did. Mm. So, but now I think I don't want to, 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 uh, that initiative to happen on, at that level. I want to go to another level whereby we are consciously, we consciously want our Dewan Negara to have gender equality. In other words, the federal appointment, the state appointment has to be more conscious on gender. Why I say so, uh, I believe the future is female. That's why? the name of my show, by the way. <laughs> you can catch that on Saturdays. <laughs> why? why? At least, at least for me, what, what I have seen in, 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 in Dewan Negara and Dewan Rakyat, Somehow, somewhere, the big elephant is parochialism. The men can be parochial, and you, I don't want to use this racism, can be parochial because they only see within their parameters. You cannot see beyond your parameters. So for me, before you assume that interaction can happen beyond the silo circle, you have to insert it. Right. So for me, uh, to have gender equality is something strategic, something the right thing to do. Right, so yeah. breaking that kind of unconscious uh, bias through yeah. guidelines, yeah. in fact. Yeah. Now, okay, so in the couple minutes that we have left, I want to know, with this report out, with the proposals for this for reform, what is the way forward? How do you move this along? What, it, what would it take uh, Do you need public this? Pa participation in this? I mean, yeah. would you benefit from a petition or a campaign run by ordinary people to support reform at the Dewan Negara? So I have to say this with full of conviction. If government of today don't do it, I think they, they disappoint the will of the people because previously it will only happen with the will of the government. But now, since we already put that in our manifesto and the people supported us, and, and at least we have, we have shown it, at least we, we saw in Dewan Rakyat, 
a few interesting select committee. Now, now it's happening. But now in Dewan Negara, for me, the easiest way, the way I look at it, is very simple. You can, it can either come from the speaker himself, who will be mandated with the power, he can initiate that, or to make things more, I would say, historical, something more effective. I wish this report will be uh, sponsored by the minister in charge of parliament, get the cabinet, endorse it, and come back to us. And more importantly is that to make the reform truly come from the voice of parliament, not quote-unquote uh, executive bias. Because that, again, I have to say, is oxymoron when you have the parliamentary reform uh, sponsored by another entity. It has right. to come from parliament. But of course, what I said, theoretically speaking, what I said, uh, how it's going to happen, it has to happen in the, in the nuance of reform. Because things is not happen the way we, we want it. It has to be reformed. Well, thank you so much for being on the show today. Unfortunately, that's all the time <laughs> we have on Consider This. I'm Melissa Idris with Sherrod Kutun, and we will be both back same time tomorrow. Catch us then. <laughs> <laughs>